Welcome back. So now you know some basic HTML and CSS. If you don't, go and take the course. I really encourage you to do that. The crash course I just showed you in the last video. So what's next step? Well, I want to show you guys what's actually going to happen. And we're going to build this distributed system. I talked about that earlier. And we're going to talk about the MVC part in the next series here. This, this is going to be about this part of the series. But I want you guys to get more of an overview about what is actually a front end, back end, and database. How we're going to make all of this as a full series. Um, so I just made a small architectural drawing, kind of my own uh, making here. And let me try and explain it to you step by step what's actually going to happen in a single request from a web page. Because it is, there's a lot going on inside the MVC application. And um, this is the drawing. Yeah, don't, don't, don't run away. Don't worry. I'll, I'll take it step by step. It's a huge drawing and there's so much information here. Um, but I want to run over it and I'll, I'll split this drawing. I'll kind of divide and conquer. I'll start splitting it into bits to talk about the different areas with you. But this is kind of the full stack. This is how we get data from a web browser all the way down. Here's the browser. And we're going to get data all the way down into a database and all the way back to the browser. That's kind of the goal of it. So I just want to run over this drawing once and for all, and then we'll start splitting it into parts as we move forward in the series. So let's start out in this area. So let's go to the, to the browser part. That's what you know. That's the UI that you see when you click around in your browser, and it can be any browser, Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, Safari, whatever you're using. Um, it's up to you, whatever browser you like. And the browser kind of takes HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and presents it to you. Like think of the HTML as the structure. That's like if it was a house and that would be the walls, it would be the roof, the structure of your page. The CSS is going to make it pretty. That would be the paint on the walls, the pictures you hang up, um, whatever you do to make your house look pretty. And then the JavaScript would be the more the dynamic part, like opening the doors. Um, you, can, you can do a lot of things in a house, uh, start the, open the fridge, put stuff into the fridge. So that would be the dynamic part of your view. But that's the browser is only able to handle these types of data right now. So it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's why HTML and CSS is kind of a must for us to get started with this course. Now, that's the browser. That's the thing you use to display data for the user. But every time you click something like get data in a browser, behind the scenes, something called a request is actually sent. An HTTP request is being sent to a web server somewhere in the cloud. So what's going to happen is when I click get data, I'm going to send a request, either a post, a get, a put, or a delete request. We'll get into this as we move forward. I'll send some data in the form of JSON, HTML, or just some parameters inside a, a URL. And I'll send that to some kind of web server. In our case, the web server is going to be um, an MVC application. And there it's going to take this information and convert it into C Sharp using uh, something we call controllers. We'll get into that in the next lessons. So we'll, we'll use MVC framework. We'll use something called a proxy pattern to actually take the data and send it onwards into a new request. What? Yeah, we're going to send a new request because we want to make a two-tier application having a REST API somewhere in the cloud. So we'll then pass on the data into another web server. Yeah, now we have two web server. And that web server has a REST API available for us. I'll explain that in good time why that is important for us. That'll grab the data, convert the data using the NT framework. It'll take the data into C sharp objects. Then it'll take the NT framework, convert that into SQL. It'll send that down to a database, store the data or retrieve the data. It'll send that data back to the NT framework. It'll pass it into a web API. It'll send it back using an HTTP response. That'll send to uh, it through a proxy. That'll send to a MVC uh, framework again. That'll send another response convert it into um, another HTTP response that has some uh, HTML, some JavaScript, some CSS, and guess what? That can be presented inside the browser. That's the full setup. Wow, that's a lot to grasp. I know that, don't worry, we'll dig into it now step by step. But this is what we call a full stack, right? This could be anything. I did it with the JavaScript full stack in earlier videos. You can go and watch those if you want. I'll add a link in the description. It's outdated, but it's there. Um, and this is just another full stack, just using the C sharp platform instead as the full stack. And I'll make a new full stack with another JavaScript setup within the next six months. So get ready for that. Just a bit of commercial there. 
But now let's focus on this, only the MVC part of this setup. We won't touch the entire web API in the first series here. We'll just touch on this area, the browser, how we get data to the MVC application. I don't even think we'll touch the proxy right away. We'll make some fake database like we did in the previous uh, the crash course series. So see in the first lesson where we'll move into real MVC development next time. Have fun.